Icarus, this is Ground Control. We are entering the final stages of blast off. Please stand by. Roger that, Ground Control. Stand by? How can we stand by? We're buckled to these chairs. It means hold on a second, Laura. Oh, so what do we do while we hold on a second, Artie? Well, we could go over the briefing for this mission. Okay. It means the plan. I I knew that. Let me check what we've got here. Hmm. One, fly to the moon. Two, go skiing on the moon. Three, have a cheese and cracker lunch on the moon. Sounds like a fun trip. Yeah, but where are we going to get the cheese? What do you mean? Well, we have the crackers, but there's no cheese on the moon. Unless there's some kind of robot refrigerator up there full of it or something. You mean, we didn't pack cheese? I didn't. How are we supposed to succeed on this mission if we don't have cheese for Objective 3? I don't know. I'm not the genius here. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm going to get some cheese. There's no time. All checks have been completed, Icarus. Beginning countdown on your mark. Mark? Copy that, Icarus. Beginning countdown. Ten. No! Nine. Wait! Artie's not eight, back yet! Ground seven, control, we have no six, cheese! We five, have no four, cheese! I'm back! Three, I've got the cheese! Hurry and get buckled! One. Lift off. We have lift off. Landing gear down. Are we clear to land, Artie? Copy that, Laura. Clear to land. <laughs> wow. These cardboard boxes are really getting a workout. Oh. Hi, Mr. Jacobs. Did you make these spaceships? Yep. Last week, Joy, Everett, and Monica were over, and we had a spaceship building party. They're really cool. They don't mind if we play in them, do they? Oh, I'm sure they won't. Hi, Mr. Jacobs. Got a couple deliveries for you. Oh, thanks, Sam. Busy day? Not really. You're the last stop for this morning. Are those cardboard spaceships? Yeah, come on in. Maybe later, Laura. Thanks, though. Can I get you anything, Sam? Uh, I'll take a water if that's all right. Can I have some orange juice? Artie, it's rude to ask people for something if they didn't offer it. It's all right. Would you like something, Laura? Orange juice? Coming right up. Make yourself at home, Sam. I'll be right back. Thanks. And we can listen to the radio while we wait. Is there anything else I can get you guys? I'm good, Mr. Jacobs. Thanks for the orange juice. Yeah, I'm with Artie. Thank you. So, Mr. Jacobs. Yes, Sam? How can I help you? I have a question that I've been trying to figure out for about a week now, and I was wondering if you could help me out with it? Oh, skipping the backstory or inciting incident, I see. Just getting to the point today. Sorry. I was just listening to the radio, and I heard someone talking about devotions. Devotions? What's that? It's like quiet times where you read your Bible and pray a lot. Sounds like an interesting topic. Is there something you didn't understand about it? Well, the teacher was talking about how it was important to give God our time. He said if we go a day without reading the Bible or praying, we could end up in big trouble. I see. A lot of what he said made sense, but it's got me worried. I haven't been a Christian for very long, and I don't always remember to do those things. Now I guess you'd better get ready for some big trouble. <laughs> Is that true, Mr. Jacobs? Do I have to worry about something bad happening because I forgot to do something like read my Bible? I pray a lot and I try to do the right thing, but is that enough? These are good questions, Sam, and I appreciate your concern. Well, yeah. She doesn't want anything bad to happen to her because she didn't read her Bible every day. I think that's pretty concerning. Good point, Laura. But I think I'd better mention that reading your Bible and praying aren't lucky charms or spells that keep bad things from happening. What I think the preacher was trying to say is, if we don't take time to know God and draw closer to Him, we might not have the courage or the wisdom to make the right choices when hard times come our way. Is that in the Bible? There are a few verses like Psalm 119.11 and 105 that say something along those lines. It's important for us to spend time with God every day. But more importantly, God deserves our time. He's the one who gives it to us in the first place, so it makes sense that we use it all to serve Him. I guess that makes sense. But how? I can't pray and have devotions all the time. I've got to go to work. I have to sleep sometime. That's true. And I think I have a script that can help explain. I'll be right back. And now, 
from the garage of Lionel Jacobs comes the super drama, The Distracted Superhero, an adapted biblical teaching about living for God. Once upon a time in the thriving city of downtown, there lived a superhero. Greetings, fair citizens. She would fly to and fro throughout the metropolis, bringing law and safety to the streets and alleys. She is the face of justice in our city. If only she was around all the time. Yeah, she only does all these incredible things on Sundays. The rest of the time, we're pretty much on our own. Yes, as strange as it seems, if disaster struck on a weekday or on a Saturday, this superhero was nowhere to be found. There were a few theories to why this was the case. I think she has other cities that she protects, places far away we've never heard of before. She saves a different city every day. I think she gets her power from the sun, and that's why she can only be a superhero on her day, Sunday. I don't think so. Then, one day, a mild-mannered news reporting science lawyer took off her glasses to clean them and was recognized. Hey, you're the superhero. It's you, and it's not even a Sunday. Uh, hi. You're right. It is her. Wow, can I have an autograph? Don't be rude. Oh, right, sorry. May I please have an autograph? Look, guys, I can't stick around. Sunday, maybe? We were just talking about that. Maybe you can clear something up for us. Yeah, how come you're not saving people and doing superhero stuff all the time? Why just Sundays? Yeah, we could have really used your help with that whole alien invasion last Thursday. Well, it's just that I just want to have time to do my own thing, you know? How am I supposed to enjoy life if I have to help people and be an example of how to be a good citizen? Can't I just live for me? But you're a superhero. You help people. That's why you have powers. After all, with great- Look, I'm sick of people telling me how I should use my powers. You're lucky I stick around at all. You need me. I don't know. I think we deserve a better hero than a selfish brat. So much for a hero. More like a fake. I'm not a fake. I'm a hero. I save people all the time. Obviously not all the time. Looks like we need to find ourselves another superhero. No, come back. Forget it. We're only interested in a real hero. The moral is being a Christian isn't something we turn on and off when we feel like it. It's who we are. We live for God, and by serving him, we are examples of his forgiveness, power, and love. Sometimes we can get distracted by our own wants and we can stop serving God. But when we start living for ourselves instead of Him, it not only makes us look like fakes, but it also hurts our chances of being able to serve Him. Looking a little thoughtful there, Sam. Was the superhero story not helpful? Well, it wasn't bad. (laughs) Okay, what's on your mind? Well, it made a little sense, Mr. Jacobs, I mean, it told us how we need to live for God all the time, not just some of the time. But I'm still not sure what that all looks like. Yeah, and what does this have to do with what we were talking about? With devotions and stuff? All right, I'll see what I can do to clarify, Artie. Sometimes preachers and pastors talk about the importance of spending time with God and how since God gave us time in the first place, He deserves our time. Well, these things are true. But we often get the idea that they're talking about setting time aside to read our Bibles and pray. But spending time with God is more than that. You mean like going to church? Even more than that, Laura. Sunday school. (laughs) Nope. The Bible says in verses like Colossians 3.17 and 1 Corinthians 10.31 that whatever we do needs to be for God. We need to let all our lives be spending time with Him, asking Him to be with us and to teach us to calm us down before we do something out of anger, to use words that he would use. In short, letting him guide our lives instead of letting ourselves get in the way. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, are we just supposed to be puppets for God to play with or something? Hmm. Some people might think so, but the way I see it is kind of like these cardboard boxes. The spaceships? Right. I gave you kids these cardboard boxes to have fun with them to be creative with them and pretty much just to see what you would come up with. And I think God gives us our lives and minds to do the same thing. It makes me happy to see these boxes becoming something amazing. And when we live the way God meant for us to live, creating and learning with God's help, I'm sure he's happy too. This is a lot to think about. 
I'm sure it's more complicated than I even realize. Oh, probably, Sam. But Jesus made it very easy for us to understand when he explained in Matthew 22, 37, telling us that all we need to do is love God and love people as much as we love ourselves. By doing those two things all the time, we will be living for God, and if we ask him to help us, he will. That is easier to understand. I still think I need to talk about this with my parents. That's a good idea, Artie. I'll probably talk it over with my friend from church tomorrow. Well, speaking of tomorrow, I need to go home now. I've got cousins visiting, and Mom told me to make sure my room is cleaned up before they get here. All right. Have fun. Oh, yeah. I'd better get going, too. Thanks for talking, Mr. Jacobs. No problem, Sam. And if you need any Bible study plans or guides, I have a few books you can borrow. Wait, books that help you read the Bible? Can't people just read the Bible? Sure, but it's a big book, and those books help some people understand it better. Interesting. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Mind if I take a look now? Right this way. I guess we're done listening to the radio. Would you mind turning it off, Artie? No problem. No problem.